Hello and good evening from Ireland. I am Ali O'Shea and welcome to day four of my gratitude challenge. So I'm just going to wait for some people to come in the room before I get started. Hello, Paul. Hi, Angretta. Hello, Bug. Hi, Leonidas. Hi, Kathy. Welcome. Welcome to day four of my gratitude challenge. Hello. How are you all doing today? Hi, Carla. Welcome. Hi, Nicola. So welcome to you all to my day four of my gratitude challenge. Hello, Serena. Welcome. How's everybody doing today? Let me know how you're doing and where you're joining me from. And yesterday I did ask that you write down five things in the morning that you were grateful for before you even got out of bed and that you come back and share with me at least three of those things that you were grateful for. So if you could leave in the comments three of the things that you wrote down that you were grateful for yesterday, we are promoting the energy of gratitude to manifest more of the things that we want in our lives. Hello, Joelle, thank you for sharing, Paul. Hi, Jenny, hi, John, hi, Fabiola. So if you could share while I'm live, it will get this further and wider into any law of attraction, spirituality, positivity groups, etc. while I'm live, please. Hello, Beverly, and hello to everyone watching on the replay. Thank you, John, for sharing. Good evening, Joelle. So welcome to day four, then, of my gratitude challenge. So you guys can write in the comments three of the things that you wrote down that you were grateful for and everybody will get to see them and it'll give other people ideas of things to be grateful for as well. Hello, Marissa, welcome. So gratitude is so important. The fact that you opened your eyes this morning, the fact that you've got air that you can breathe into your lungs, it's so, so important. Good morning, Jason Stevenson. Welcome. And I'm going to read to you a little article from a lady called Janet Miller on gratitude. In the famous words of Ferris Bueller, life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. Anne says, grateful for having holidays still. Still on holiday, I think. Whoa. My arms, my breath, the beautiful nature around me and my bed. Beautiful. Good evening, Jason from Ireland, and good morning to you. I believe you're on at 1 a.m. our time, 11, 12, 1 a.m. Three hours from now, Jason, is that correct? Fabiola is grateful for her faith, her husband and her daughter. Beverly's grateful for family gatherings, new relationships and her fur babies. Hi, Brandy. Hello, Ella. Hello, Jeanette. Hello, Amber. Paul said, uh, he lost his pen and paper or my dog ate my homework. You're not really very good at this game, Jim. Paul. <laughs> G'day. Kathy says she's happy for waking up. Happy, grateful I could walk. Grateful for water. Fantastic. Not so many people have clean water to drink. We are very blessed if we have clean water. And it's something that we take for granted. So you're, you're live four hours from now. Okay, that's 2 a.m. my time. Anybody um, still awake in four hours' time, get on over to the Life Expansion channel of Jason Stevenson, my friend there and meditation guru of the world, Jason Stevenson. So in the famous words of Ferris Bueller, life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop to look around once in a while, you could miss it. Hi, Colleen. It can be easy to get swept away in the fast lane and forget to stop and show your appreciation for what you do have. A life well lived is one of gratitude and thankfulness. To help you on your journey, here are eight ways to have more gratitude in your daily life. Hi, Carmel. Jason, I'll watch the replay. So number one is don't be picky, appreciate everything. 
Gratitude doesn't have to be saved for the big things in life. The habit of being grateful starts with appreciating everything good in life and recognizing that there is nothing too small for you to be thankful for. Hi, Caro. Even if it is understanding and appreciating that everything that comes to you is just a blessing and a gift that we practice the gratitude for that. Jason loves uh, that, that movie. Yeah, it's a really good movie. So even if it's something as simple as appreciating the clear weather or how quickly your mailman delivered your mail last Friday, things we don't even think about, things that we take for granted, the mailman that had to cycle on his bike perhaps to your house in the freezing cold or the rain um, and be bitten by numerous dogs along the way, joking of course, but to be grateful for these kinds of things, to be grateful for the guys who fix the roads when we're all complaining, why are they fixing the roads when the kids have just gone back to school? We should be grateful and appreciative that they are making the roads better for us. Um, or to be grateful when we're stuck in traffic because it's teaching us patience. And I did a live on patience in my uh, Ali O's Vibe Tribe where I go live like this once a week exclusively. And it's a 10 euro subscription group per month, uh, which is very low cost for that type of group. And I also bring other people to uplift and inspire in there as well. For those of you just joining me for the first time, I'm an, I'm an international law of attraction practitioner, a writer, a healer, and an inspirational speaker. And I teach people the law of attraction through my workshops, through coaching, and through these free video content that I put out to all of you. So number two is to find gratitude in your challenges. Gratitude is not only about being thankful for positive experiences. In fact, sometimes thinking about negative or difficult situations can help to really nail down what you have to be thankful for. John said, today I was grateful for my neighbor, Pat. She did a shop for me. I had a slight chest infection, my lo lovely Facebook friendships and my niece who arrives tomorrow. Lovely, John. Hope you're feeling better. Kathy says, the guys that put our electricity back on. Perfect example. Uh, Beverly says, hello from Texas. Hello, Beverly. Grateful for the rain, unconditional love, and my cozy bed. Fantastic. Paul has put up my website shop link there if anyone would like to purchase my Law of Attraction workshops. They're 30% off at the moment. Hello, Tanya. Just clarified with Jason. Jason, it's actually 2 o'clock in the morning, our time, um, if you're in European time, that he will be live four hours from now, he said. Uh, Carmel Kelly says, my eighth grandchild was born in Australia yesterday. Little boy, I'm so grateful. Oh, congratulations, that's fantastic news. Western Buddhist Master Jack Cornfields remembers an exercise he did with a man who was caring for his grandson while his son and daughter-in-law battled a drug addiction. Despite all that he had been through, the man was still able to find gratitude for the amount of compassion he had learned to show and the impact he was able to have on other people. Dig a little deeper into some of your own past experiences and try to figure out how they have helped you shape you into the person you are today. Number three, oh, I've disappeared. Practice mindfulness. So mindfulness is really important on your spiritual journey and on the journey of life to practice mindfulness can help with so many things, stress, anxiety, depression, numerous, countless things. And it's really important to learn to practice mindfulness as well as obviously to meditate. So sit down daily and think through five to 10 things you are grateful for. And as those of you who've been on days one to three of this challenge, that is part of my challenge to you is to write five things in the morning before you get out of bed and five things that you reflect on in the evening that you are grateful for that day. The trick is that you need to picture it in your mind and sit with that feeling of gratitude in your body. As we all know, knowing the law of attraction, it is so important and key to bring your emotions into play when you're visualizing and when you're trying to manifest something into your reality. So you should bring in sight, sound, taste, touch and smell into your visualization to bring it alive and to help it to burst into your reality quicker. 
Doing this every day will rewire your brain to naturally be more grateful and you'll start to feel happier after every session. On day one, we spoke about how it creates dopamine in your body, the dopamine levels to, to rise up, which basically tell your brain, oh, do that again, and it creates feelings of happiness. It only takes eight weeks of gratitude practice for people to start showing changed brain patterns that lead to greater empathy and happiness. Your brain is a powerful tool and training it towards gratitude is all part of ensuring the gratitude comes more easily as you practice. So what are you waiting for? Anne says, been out in the sun, walk barefoot in the grass, great, grounding yourself, fantastic. Smelling the clean mountain air, excellent vibrations, all good, well done. Tanya said, hi Jason, hi Ali, hi everyone. We're well, I think, yeah, we're all good. Thank you, Tanya, hope you are. So number four is to create a gratitude journal, which is obviously part of your task. I did say to you, yeah, you can use a bit of paper, but if you're gonna be doing this as an ongoing practice, which you should be, because it really helps to um, bring so much joy and happiness and other things into your life. So I hope that you will continue this practice above and beyond the seven days with me and that you will have got yourselves a little gratitude journal. Don't worry if you didn't get it at the beginning, but do get yourself a little notebook and have it as your gratitude journal because it's better to have it all together and then you can look back on it. Um, I just want to mention as well before I start with number four. Hello, Steve, welcome. My friend Gregory Hammond, who is um, a friend on Facebook, he works with Bob Proctor and I think he's written a book and his it's called 60 Seconds to Serenity, so check him out. He uh, posted a video this morning, which was really beautiful in Positive People Army and I think in my Law of Attraction Create Your Own Reality group, where he does a gratitude ritual of bringing rose petals in a bowl. So he had a huge, huge bowl and he was out in a forest by a river and he was dropping rose petals into the energy and the vibration of nature in the river and thinking thoughts of gratitude as he did it. And so people for miles, as, as the water would move along in the river, will eventually see all those beautiful colored rose petals as well and have a feeling of gratitude for that. It was really beautiful practice. Um, I might see if I can find it tomorrow and share it on my timeline. Um, but um, I thought that was a beautiful practice and he shared that this morning, Gregory Hammond. So keeping a gratitude journal then, after your mindfulness session, write down your positive thoughts. Keeping a journal of all the things you are thankful for can help you keep track of and refer back to the positives in your life. Write down your positive thoughts to further focus your attention on the subject. Thanks for the hearts, guys. While you are putting pen to paper, you have no choice but to consciously think about the words you are writing without other distracting, ungrateful thoughts. Hello, Betty. Oh, no, sorry, Becky. Hi, Steve. Number five is to volunteer. For many people, the key to having more gratitude is to give back to others in their local community. Not only will it make you more grateful for the things that you may take for granted, but studies have shown that volunteering for the purpose of helping others increases our own well-being and thus our ability to have more gratitude. University of Pennsylvania, Martin Seligman, supports this theory with his research in Flourish a visionary new understanding of happiness and well-being. After testing all kinds of variables that improve our well-being, he found that volunteering is the single most reliable way to moment, 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 momentarily, momentarily, I'll get the words out, momentarily, <laughs> increase your well-being. In other words, helping others helps you. Maybe I should have just said that last sentence. Tongue twisters. Well, said so she saw Greg uh, do the rose petal gratitude ritual. Oh, no, you didn't. You saw something else. You saw something else. Did you? I don't know. I'm lost. Hi, Giza. Hi, Miko. 
Um, see you later, Tanya. Thanks for joining. Hello, Anne. Good evening, Giza. Momentarily. There, I said it. I said it. Yay. Okay, number six is express yourself. Sometimes it's not enough to simply keep your gratitude to yourself. You can increase your feelings of gratitude by expressing that same gratitude to the people that you care about. Soul Pancake, a group that works to discover the science of happiness, ran an experiment where they encouraged people to write a letter to a person they were grateful for. By itself, this exercise increased their levels of happiness from 2 to 4%. However, when the same people made a phone call to the person that they were thankful for to express their gratitude directly, happiness levels jumped from 4% to 19%. That's a pretty big percentage jump. Not only does gratitude for someone make their day a little brighter, but it can do wonders for increasing your own levels of gratitude and happiness in the long run. Anne says, I always say thank you when someone gives me something or do something for me. Of course, yeah, absolutely. Number seven is to spend time with loved ones. If you're struggling with the feeling of gratitude in the moment, go spend some time with your friends and family. Of course, it will help you to grow closer to them and to strengthen your relationship, but it will also give you a chance to practice your act of gratitude on people that you care about. Start small. If they're having trouble finding ways to support your friends or family, for instance, why don't you make sure you're listening intently the next time someone shares a story with you instead of waiting for your own chance to speak? That's really important, isn't it? Quite a lot of times people are listening with the sort of impatience of waiting to give their answer or to share a similar story. But it's really important that we listen to people and really listen to them. Or start a conversation with a difficult fam member of the family by complimenting their new shoes or haircut. Number eight. Improve your happiness in other areas of your life. Being grateful can make you happy, but being happy can also make you grateful. There are plenty of other ways to get your mood up, including exercising or participating in a hobby you enjoy. Once you start feeling the endorphins flow, showing gratitude will become even easier and you'll start to be able to make a list after list of all the things in your life that you are thankful for. Once, sorry, yeah, once you, and you'll be thankful for that. And that was written by Janet Miller. So a lot of those things that I have already covered in different ways, we've said them, that it's so important to help others, that it's um, important to express yourself, to keep the gratitude journal, and also obviously mindfulness is really important. According to Robert Emmons, he says that gratitude is very powerful. Powerful to do three things. Heal, to heal, to energize, and to change lives. It gives the power to heal past hurts as well as hope and inspiration. It represents in many cases a turning of the mind to focus not on what which one is lacking or deprived of, but which one has already. So I'd just like to finish up a little bit with, this was a little film, a little um, five minute film clip, but I watched uh, by a guy called Louis, now I'm gonna try and pronounce his surname, Schwartzberg, Louis Schwartzberg. And this is what he said. You think that this is just another day in your life. Hello, Wendy. It's not just another day. It's the one gift that is given to you today. 
It's given to you. It's a gift. It's the only gift that you have right now. And the only appropriate response you have is gratefulness. Hello, Susan. Hello, Owen. If you do nothing else but to cultivate the response to the great gift that this unique day is, if you learn to respond as if it were the first day in your life and the very last day, then you will have spent this day very well. Hello, Angie. Begin by opening your eyes and be surprised that you have eyes that can open. That incredible array of colors that is constantly offered to us for pure enjoyment. And as we said the other day, not everyone is so blessed. Look at the sky. We so rarely look at the sky. Note how different it is from moment to moment, with clouds coming and going. We just think of the weather, and even with the weather, we don't think of all the many nuances of the weather. Maybe the, this kind will never exactly come in this form again. The formation of the clouds in the sky will never be the same that it is right now. Open your eyes. Look at that. Look at the faces of the people whom you meet. Each one has an incredible story behind their face. A story that you could never fully fathom. Not only their own story, but the story of their ancestors. We all go back so far. And in this present moment, in this day, all the people that you meet, all that life from generations and from so many places all over the world, flows together and meets you here like a life-giving water if only if you only open your heart and drink open your heart to the incredible gifts that civilization offers you there is electricity there is you turn a faucet and there is cold water and there is warm water and drinkable water it's a gift. It's a gift that millions and millions of people in the world will never experience. There are just a few of an enormous number of gifts to which you can open your heart. Open your heart to all of these blessings and let them flow through you. That everyone who you will meet on this day will be blessed by you. Just by your eyes, by your smile, by your touch, just by your presence. Let the gratefulness flow into blessing all around you. Then it will be a really good, good day. And that was by Louis Schwarzberg. Hello, Sherry. Hello, Wendy. It doesn't matter if you're behind Wendy. You can go back and watch the replays. The replays are available on my timeline and my YouTube channel. And on YouTube, I'm just under Ali Boucher. So again, everybody, I'd like you, if you're just joining me and you don't know what the challenge is, it's to get yourself a nice notebook. And every morning, when you've opened your eyes, before you get out of bed, to write down five things that you're grateful for. We all have so many things to be grateful for, so there's no excuse. And when you start, you get into a routine of finding more and more and more and more things. In the evening, I'd like you to sit and contemplate in silence before going to bed or sleep and write down five more things that you are grateful for that day. And then I'd like you all to come back and share with us tomorrow at least three of the things that you wrote down on your list.
Hello, Samantha. So I hope you enjoyed this evening. That is it for day four. I will be back again with day five. And I hope to see lots of you here. Um, I thank each and every one of you for joining me, whatever time it is in your part of the world. Yes, even the most smallest things in size, like a beautiful ant. Absolutely, Jay. All the animals have a reason to be in our ecosystem and provide so many things throughout the um, animal kingdom and, and throughout nature and for us as humans. Wendy says, Jason, I listen to your meditations nightly. Oh, thank you, Kathy. She said, I love, I love you, Paul and Ali O'Shea. I'm grateful for you. And we're grateful for you too, Kathy. Thank you. Hi, Bridget, boo-boo. I'm just finishing up. Thank you, Jason. I wish you a beautiful day ahead, as you would say. And um, Jason will be live in, correct me if I'm wrong, three and a half hours from now on his Life Expansion channel. That's Life Expansion by Jason Stevenson on YouTube. Uh, just one more thing. There is 30% off my Law of Attraction workshops, online workshops at the moment, www.expansivesouls.com. Thank you, Giza. Must have a catch up soon, sweetheart. So as always, I am sending love from my heart to yours, along with heaps and heaps and heaps of gratitude and appreciation. I have been Ali O'Shea. Have a beautiful day. Thank you so much for joining me. Namaste.